okay so now if i look at the mining model viewer you can just refresh this click on yes basically it gives me um, a representation of all of the different algorithms if i were to use the clustering model i would get a set of clusters we'll go in deep details when we go to the respective demos of uh, the respective algorithms and uh, this should be the output of your clustering model if you go to the logistic regression you would get the results like this what is in favor of zero what is in favor of three etc if you go to say a neural network you should get something like this so that is a basic um, output that you would get Um, if you want, I want to have a look at the different graphs, um, you know, by do a comparison of the different mining models, you could probably um, predict some some value that you would like to see, say, number of people who would own at least one car using the different models, and then basically click on lift chart, and it's going to plot a nice graph for you. And... Um, so basically, um, we could actually spend some time in just uh, reviewing how to read this graph. This basically represents your ideal condition that, um, you know, it should ideally be performing. And this basically is um, the ideal model for prospective buyer. And our models are lying in between this. So the idea is to get as close to this red line. So this is um, we could do by actually fine-tuning our inputs providing more training data into our model and training our data training our model in such a way that we get as close as possible to the red line so the next uh, small demo that I would like to show you is basically using the time series algorithm so internally it uses the fast Fourier algorithms and uh, generally it's used for far forecasting of numerical data so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show this small example using excel so let me just open excel and um, okay so let me just close this one and I'll get in some data for us to work with. So I'm going to connect to SQL Server. My server name is going to be Training PC. And let me click on Next. I'll connect to my AdventureWorks Data Warehouse, click on, say select the, get in some data to work with, let me select prospective buyer, click on next, alright, I'm going to push this data into a table, and this is basically the same table that we worked with later on, and <clears throat> it has the first name, middle name, last name, and a couple of other columns which says number of cars owned, what is my education, number of children at home, and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do over here is, if you click on this table, you'll find a tab called Analyze over here. So, so what I'm going to do here is, first of all, you need to set up your connection. So in this case, I've already set up my connection. Or, so let me just... Wait one second, I just deployed a new version. So I'm going to connect to that one right now and it's called Decision Tree or DT. Click on OK. Click on Close.
and here uh, let me just show you a simple example of say forecast this is going to use the time series algorithm and what I need to forecast is the number of cars owned so I'm going to click on that and click on run so it's going to take this as the input into its mining model and it's going to give me some data which I can work with it's basically a graphical representation of the number of cars that would be owned um, so it basically depends on what kind of input you are getting and accordingly a graph would be plotted that basically has a direct representation of the time series algorithm so to make this demo a little bit simpler what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the same data and show you something else so if you will find that there is a, a option called analyze key influencers and we click on that then basically what it do, does is that it detects the influence of other columns on the values of the target column so what we need to do over here is we need to select a column to analyze for key factors so what I'm going to do over here is select on number of cars owned and I'm going to run this one all right so it does give me a table and here if you see that let me just filter upon this one and say number of cars own and the key influencing conditions would be when the education is partial co the occupation is manual total children is one and so on and so forth it is much more favorable for that person to own at least one car so for example if we were to make a decision on a marketing campaign uh, most probably if we were to promote for a person to buy a single car we would be looking at a set of population who at least satisfy these conditions this might require more studying more input making the model more perfect in order to take such decisions but just to get the idea this is how analysis would be done let us just filter on two and see what all it comes up with you see that the birth date should be in this range and education should be this one birth date again should fall under this range education should be so on and so forth so this is how their impact analysis is generally uh, you know done and this is how you start actually analyzing who all would be your potential customers who would buy at least one car all right so let me go back to my sheet and um, click on again analyze and there is again um, option called data categories basically what it's going to do is it's going to take this super set of data and basically starts putting them in certain categories so let me see if yeah I think um, yeah these columns make sense to have put it in categories I'm going to run this and What it's going to do is it's, it's going to categorize this entire data and put it into certain categories. So basically uh, this will require a more comprehensive level of study before we start recognizing what is category 1, what is category 2, what is category 3 and so on and so forth. So let's see. So if we say choose category 2, we see that the yearly income is very low right about you know, min, I mean below 39,288 and basically occupation is manual city is downy and so on and so forth so I can take a rough guess that category 2 is basically low yearly income and if I change this I see that all the categories do change over here that basically people who are in this city with a low yearly income fall under this category and this is how you start actually categorizing into different clusters and um, but this would definitely require some deep study of how you should be able to look at data in order to actually start categorizing so let us see if we can just take one more example and let me just click on category 3 and let's see what does it say oh this is unknown so let us click on category 5 okay 
So maybe category 5 is dealing with all missing postal codes, right? And um, yeah, so that is how you start determining what a category actually belongs to. Um, the other thing that I'd like to show you over here is basically uh, in most of the situations when it is be when you know a certain set of data is driven manually by an operator or someone there are chances that he or she might make some mistakes so analysis services mining algorithms actually gives us some pattern matching in which it will try to highlight some exceptions like it will actually start detecting some sort of pattern like for example people staying in this city or having certain qualifications generally have an income of more than say ninety thousand dollars and suppose it finds that a person stays in that particular city and has say a management degree but his annual income is say five thousand it says that okay this is maybe a bit out of pattern and this might be a potential mistake right um, so this pattern matching you know is always um, I mean sometimes even helpful in say fraud detection suppose I start analyzing a pattern of how you spend money using your credit card it might be that daily you do may have lunch from your cafeteria using a credit card and daily the average spend is around say $20, $25 and one day it just shoots up to say $25,000 or $30,000 immediately I see a break in pattern I generally I can probably assume that there is some sort of fraud happening in that particular scenario anyway so let us just click on highlight exceptions and if you see um, it just asks me what all columns do you need me to actually start to recognize patterns on so it has checked a couple of columns which I feel is okay for now I'm going to run this we will have some output ready mm -hmm. about a minute all right so this basically says what is your threshold right so we have set it to 75 we can reduce it as soon as we start reducing it we see that um, the 